Hello? Okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, just to warn you, this is going to be a very, very short introduction to time series capabilities in driverless AI. I have approximately 10 minutes to tell you, you know, I extremely high over you what's, you can, what type of time series forecasting you can do in driverless AI. So, let me skip my background. Well, as you already learned, driverless AI has a very simple, uh, process, you have some input data, you define a target, you pick up the metric, identify some specific resource like time and hardware available, and you know, you build a lot of, you will receive a lot of autom automatic solutions, like you can automatically visualize your data, there's a feature engineering selection process, you, can, you have a model, you can interpret the following model, and you get your scoring pipeline, you know, into your production if you want to. So. Uh, basically, for time series, you're following exactly the same process. There is not a lot of changes actually in that. Uh, uh, what's ex it should actually we should I should mention what exactly we mean by time series problem. We have a quiet, loose, you know, and very very high level definition. So basically, every process which depends on time we can consider as a time series, right? So it shouldn't be just a time series, you know, in the sense of the uh, over, you know, you have to, you have a sequence of equidistance points, right? And you ask to forecast, you know, several n next points, you know, which could be like a, considered as a classical time series um, uh, definition. You also can have actually, you know, define a time series as a, you have a data set and uh, some patterns in your data actually strongly depends on time. So in that case, Ideally, you should split your data and time, and you're supposed to use out-of-time validation. So that's actually also building in the product. So obviously, uh, like uh, we have several, we have a very different uh, time series can actually be a, a quite uh, different nature. It could be like a simple linear relationship, which is actually you know like quite simple to model. It can be also contain a, a non-linear seasonal patterns in the data. It can be a combination of trend and uh, seasonal patterns as well. So uh, also in most of our data, basically, we have a time groups. And time groups, actually, a sim simple example can be, you know, you have a, a chain of stores. Each store actually is uh, selling like, a lot of products. So each combination of store and product creates a unique time series. So, and obviously, it uh, will be beneficial not to build a, uh, you know, a, 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 a model per basically a group, per, a, a, a single model per group and uh, store and product combination. Because in that case, you won't be able to leverage the, you know, the, the information about our product sales and our store sales in general. So in driver's side, we actually build a global model which actually can leverage information about uh, our stores and product sales and sales dynamic, which could be quite helpful, especially if you do a cold start. Let's say you run a new product in a specific store, you don't have information about this uh, previous this product sales in this particular store, but you can actually think this product is going to be sold in exactly the same pace and dynamic which you actually witness in a pre in, a, in a our store in your in your chain. So this information can be actually leveraged in driver CI as well. So let me switch to, to yes. That's something driver CI can do for you as well. So yeah, clustering is one of the features provided. I'm sorry, just. It automatically detects the time group columns. So if you have stores and departments, it will automatically find that after we group by those, each time the signal is like its own series. But it yeah. doesn't obviously work if you have 5,000 columns and you have 600 group columns, then it's a little bit harder. So you can actually provide the grouping columns yourself. Usually it's only a handful, right? Usually it's store, department, or city, and or stock. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm going to show. So, so basically I have a data set. It's a Walmart data set. We uh, you can download it from Kaggle. And this data set has a, a, a two grouping column. You have a store ID, you have a 45 stores in your data set, and you have a product ID. You have 99 products ID in your data set. You also have a time. 
And basically, this data set is a weekly sales for, the la for, for two years, starting from 2010 till 2012. So two years of weekly sales data. Weekly sales basically is a, is a, is a column you, you, you could try to, you, you ask to forecast, to predict. So what I'm doing, I'm just click on predict, predict as you already did before. Taking some time. I'm picking up the target column, but I'm also picking up, I'm also selecting the, the, the date column, time column. In our case, it's a column named date. I'm also picking up the test data set, and if I do have a test data set, it actually allows me to, using test data set, it automatically can you know, identify the forecast horizon I would like to use to predict. Because in test data I have 26 weeks, it automatically suggests me to build a prediction for 26 weeks ahead of time. Well, in some, I mean, in my case, it's too, it's, it's too much, so I actually put the number four here. So gap means, let's say, in a lot of practical scenarios, the most recent data actually is not available for you, right? Let's say you have a data gathering process, data cleaning process, you know, the, the pipeline can be quite complicated. That actually could mean, so the most, let's say, recent data, let's say the last week, might be not available to you yet at the time of you have to do your forecast. So that's, we call it a gap. So this could be, a, let's say in our case, it could be like one, one week, for example. And after that, you basically launch, launch an experiment. So what happens under the hood? Let me switch back, oops, sorry. Let me switch back to my slides. So, um, so inside the RSCA, Obviously, uh, we try to mimic the same speed we have for, you know, between training and test and between uh, parameters you set up. So, first of all, we transform uh, a date column into the, into the integer. So, with, you know, so basically we create an integer beans. Each bean basically means the next point in time. Because we also assume, I mean, one of the biggest assumptions actually for time series, that's the, the, your points in time, they are they, they equidistant, right? You have exactly the same uh, distance between your, your time points. Like in our case, it's a weekly sales. That means between each time point, point in time, we have exactly one big difference. So that actually allows us to use integers as identificators as well, because basically, you know, the distance between integers is exactly the same anyway. So uh, as I mentioned before, we're trying to mimic the, you know, the trains, train and test setup using our test data. Oh, sorry, our train data. So that means inside the RSA, it, it creates a lot of splits, you know, following exactly the same pattern like, like you have for test. For example, if we, if you ask to predict two weeks ahead, giving a one gap, one big gap, that's a parameter we're trying to mimic as well. And because we're using a XGBoost or tree-based models in general for time series forecast, that means we do a following trick. We transform our time series to, 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 we extract a lot of features basically from time series uh, and kind of create IAD data set for, 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 for XGBoost to, 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 to train from. That allows us to train like a classical machine algorithms as I mentioned before. But it also creates a lot of, yeah, it it's, it's might be quite difficult to create a, a lot of, I mean, a fe features from, uh, from a time series in that scenario. So you have to be very careful, like for example, which kind of leg size you can use for your features, right? So your legs is gonna be always available and never go into the gap period, period or maybe in a validation period. And inside the period, period, period you ask to, 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 to forecast. So you can, you can actually have um, two major types of features being created. One of the type of features is basically when you extract information from your timestamp. Like for example, for date, you can extract what, what's date, what day it is in the, inside the month, what month it is, what year, what weekday, and so on and so forth. You also can actually um, create a custom transformer. I think we have a couple of transformers available, which are different holidays for different countries. Like for example, you can have, you know, like a, 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 a transformer which allows you to extract, is it a holiday or not in Germany, for example. So the next type of features which, you can, uh, which requires you to provide a, um, uh, a target column, it lacks features, it can, it can be moving average to smooth, to, to smooth a timeline, it can be exponential moving average, and so on and so forth. 
So these features after that, they actually go inside the model and it trains on, 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 on them. That, that, that's, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, there, is, there is a slide about that actually as well. So, yeah, I actually say so that's an extremely, this is extremely important thing to check, right? Most of the models operate under the assumption that time series is stationary. That means you have to, de at least you have to remove a trend and um, understand what type of seasonality you have. Is it multiplicative seasonality or ad additive seasonality, right? To be able to handle the data. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that later. So, again, um, in a recent edition of H2O of, of H2 Drive SAA, what's been done basically, now you actually can have an out of all prediction. In order to do that, they actually apply a rolling window to the train date and, and you know, and slowly uh, rolling our data through the available t train data to get you some sort of the out of all prediction. Obviously, doing, by doing that, we cannot actually create out of all prediction for the complete train, uh, uh, train time series part. Like in this example, for example, it's not, uh, it's not, we're, not uh, we're not able to extract uh, out of all prediction for the start of the time series. But we can do it like, you know, for, for time series item from, uh, from a bin number five. So, also, <clears throat> like an example I provide in the, in, in, the, in the interface, I have a 26 weeks of a, of a, of a test data, but I also, I'm actually asking about four weeks prediction ahead. That means I have enough data to create a rolling predictions, basically, right, uh, for, for, for the test part. And uh, the major downfall in this in approach we actually have, we had before, so, um, uh, you have to recalculate all your lag transfer, lag features. You basically have to recalculate all the features available uh, for, for the whole process to, to, in order to build like a really robust and uh, like high performance model. So basically, that could be done uh, in two different scenarios. The first solution, which is faster, uh, for each for each for each horizon, we ask we actually ask to predict. We basically slowly changing the, the transformers available to, to create to, to get the final test. So we don't recalculate the model, but we just uh, recalculate the features we we sent into the model, and we score the model after that to get the predictions. Obviously, the second approach will be we can actually retrain the model as well, which is slower, more time consuming, but it's more precise. And um, again, it depends on the scenario you have in in, in your. Uh, in, your, in your case. As I mentioned, we have a build your own recipe approach, so we can, you can write a custom models for time series, you can write a custom transformers. It's pretty much the same way how you can write a custom transformer model for regular driver CI, but it also requires you uh, to have information for grouping columns, time column, and yeah, I think that's, a, that's about it actually. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> also, in your dataset, will be, uh, there could be a lot of columns available, and in that case, you could also would be nice if you're able to you, to highlight which columns actually available at the time of the forecasting, because for example, I mean, like for example, information what uh, what day of the week is always available, right? But for example, the prices of the oil price, the current oil prices might be not available in time of the forecasting, so that's something. Uh, <clears throat> which that's something actually would be nice to have on, on, a, on, a, on a training time as well. So as for stationarity, basically, like, you know, a simple case will be uh, if you data have a trend, uh, building a model ba based on the tree assembles might be not a very good idea to do b b b without detraining the data because uh, your tree model has no idea about the, the concept of a trend at all. That means you have to somehow you know, remove the trend before before getting the data into into the into the model. There is a couple of ways to do that. Basically, you can fit a linear model and remove it after that, or you can basically uh, differ, like uh, take a, t t differentiate the, the time series, and uh, differentiate could be like a first level or maybe as as any as many levels as as you want to. So, like. 
that's basically an example to illustrate what I actually meant. You know, without the training of a very of this very simple function, uh, the model is, is is failing basically to to predict the, the trend. You know, it's, it it keeps the constant basically after some level because these values, these spikes actually, these uh, these maximums, they're outside of the uh, of the distribution model being trained on. So. In order, in order to, to, to fight this, that basically you first first of all you remove the trend, then to, then use the new data to predict the uh, the outcome, and then you put the trend back. So also for time series analysis, it's uh, quite important usually to, to to provide a prediction intervals. That's something that can be done uh, pretty soon. So now you have not just like a, a point estimation, but you also have a confidence intervals around the, your point estimation. So, and last slide but not least, uh, we should say like kudos to the main uh, masterminds behind Davis AI time series, which is actually uh, Marius Michalidis, who actually knows has, as Kazana on, on Google, and Farron, who, whose name is Matthias Farron. So these guys actually both are quite experienced calculators. They have a lot of uh, experience in time series in particular. And basically the whole approach we use in the Davis time series actually thanks to them. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, I will be around. So you can actually you know, ask me anything you want. And that's all I have for you. Thank you.